Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And we are talking about masturbation today. Which, yes, we are, which um, I hear a lot of people don't do that. Talk about it or talk masturbate about it. About no, it. no, talk about it. Okay, because I was going to say that, the, is... um, no, um, spoiler alert, a lot of people do masturbate. And almost everybody masturbates more than they let on. That is true. Also <laughs> true. Okay. Well, I wanted to talk about masturbation because when we're talking about relationships, it's easy to forget about relationship to ourselves. Mm. But without relationship to ourselves, um, yeah, there's something lacking. We're leaving. We are at the very least leaving some of our potential yeah. for being a human on the table. And yeah, I think that masturbation, touching yourself, fooling around, solo sex, all of that. Every term we could possibly come up with, all of that is one of the ways that we have found we can be courageous in in being present with each other. Yeah. And also be creative in what exactly sex looks like. What is yeah. sex? Anyways, so, uh, my favorite question, Jolie's favorite question. Right. What is sex? Is masturbation sex? Crickets. Crickets. My short, short answer to what is sex is that question is always context dependent and in de and, and, and in dependent on the person. It's yeah. subjective, right? So it needs to be a dialogue. There is no, there's no single definition that we can just go by and say, what is sex? And the same goes for masturbation, right? There's no single definition, but for the purposes of this discussion, let's talk about seeking let's say let's agree on a definition together all let's right practice what we preach right we talk about coming up with a shared vocabulary okay so uh, agreeing on a definition of masturbation yeah okay so where would you start i would start with um uh, personal pleasure like some some sort of pleasure um but not having here... an ice cream right well yeah right yep unless so... you're doing something very intimate with the ice cream sticky that could be sticky yeah i wouldn't um, recommend that too much sugar so i am yeah troubles ah uh, yeah i'm running into troubles immediately as to what is masturbation because well it depends on my mood right and also it's not about being alone because i've masturbated with other people present right okay so let's establish then this i don't know if you knew that for the <laughs> Occasionally, I am one of those people. Oh, right, right. Right. Um, okay. For the purposes of this discussion, we're talking about something pleasurable. We're talking about something that's not necessarily orgasm focused, right. but might be orgasm focused. We're talking about a self-pleasuring. So a, a an act that brings pleasure to myself. And... Because we were, we we're talking about sex, we we're talking about the kind of pleasure that each of us would find erotic. Right. Yes. Not, not just Some erotic sensual. energy. Okay. So, sure. Because there are lots of sensual pleasures that I would do. I mean, I would ask for a back scratch in the kitchen. That's And that's a right. sensual pleasure for me. I wouldn't call that masturbation if I were scratching my own back in the kitchen. So. <laughs> I think erotic, a lot of people would agree with you with that. Erotic energy. That I provide as uh, as a self as a mm -hmm. gift to self, and that could involve though not just myself but also toys. So now we start to extend the definition a little bit. Yeah. So I want to circle back around to erotic. What does erotic mean? What does it mean? What does eros mean? Um, love. Yep. And erotic has a certain 
connotation to it, right? Erotic yeah. is about something that we find deeper. Titillating. Uh, titill <laughs> that doesn't too help. Too much Project Runway. <laughs> yeah. There is a type of pleasure, an erotic pleasure, that and it is, doesn't have to be orgasm seeking because that, that would be like an easy way to go and say, well, if it's leading to orgasm, it's erotic. Okay, well, maybe. Okay, so one of the ways that we have differentiated erotic pleasure is by the fantasy that is present oh, yeah. while we're experiencing this pleasure. So that that fantasy may be something that you're you're fantasizing about in your own head. It could be something you're you're reading. It could be um, video material you're taking in. So it might be pornographic. It might be erotica. The fantasy that's going on for you can be helping to build this erotic tension. Eros being not just love, but like life force, um, impetus, that not impotent, impetus, <laughs> like yes. volition, yeah, volition, right? It, okay. So creative energy, creative energy. Okay. I think that's the best part. Masturbation in my book would be about being sexually creative with myself. Oh, there we go. Okay. Neat. And it does have a lot to do with fantasy, but for me, it also has a lot to do with toys. I love sex toys. I think they're great. Um, I like having a variety of them around. I like knowing that they exist even just gives me pleasure. But just knowing that in this world, in this day and age right now, I live in a place where it is safe and and free for me to engage with these other objects objects that are designed purely to bring me pleasure that makes me happy okay so so it's a broad definition i think we've we've come to uh, for but, sure which it was going to be because it's a broad set of activities it is and so here's the thing we were talking about um masturbation being self-pleasure but that doesn't mean you're alone. You right. said that doesn't mean you're yeah. alone. Right. So one of the ways that this topic comes up for me in my work is that some people don't feel comfortable sharing their masturbation with their partner. And other people love it. That's their favorite thing to do. They love sharing that. And I I don't want to pressure anybody to do anything, but I do have the have had the experience several times of realizing that there are there are a couple of ways that we can masturbate uh, when other people are present that are different from when we're alone. So when mm -hmm. when I'm alone and I am bringing myself pleasure, I am likely being less. I'm I'm spectatoring less. Sure, I'm, right. I'm not You're just not like watching performing. myself. I'm not trying to perform for someone. Right. Spectatoring is the act of sort of being outside of yourself and not being present in your body oh, okay. yeah. and, and being outside of yourself, sort of watching the sexual activity rather than really experiencing it from the somatic, from the lived experience in your body, in your soma perspective. Right. So when there are other people present, there are these other dimensions added. So now I have to watch myself and, and see, am I, experiencing pleasure and demonstrating that to you or to other partners or am i performing what i think that they want to see yeah. in erotic energy and that can be hard to even suss out for for myself is this is this for me my partner i it, it can be difficult to distinguish until i'm alone then there's nobody else around and right so when we start having the masturbation conversation in a session, when I talk to people in session, sometimes I'll ask them what they do. And it can be hard to even remember. Some of us have patterns around our masturbation. Many of us, we have a pattern around our masturbation that becomes sort of habituated. We figure out a way to get ourselves off and we do that over and over and over again. And it becomes the, the quick and easy way to have orgasmic pleasure. There's nothing wrong with it, but it can be limiting. And I've, I've found this limitation myself. If I, if I become too habituated to it, it, it can feel like I can forget how my body needs to relax and open and experience the sensuality of what's oh, happening. Yeah. It can become routine when what you're looking for is actually a, a break. 
Yeah. When I, but if, if it's I routine, want it's just be, more of the routine. Right. So, and also, so if my body, let's say, um, I think the average time for a vulva person, a, a vulva owner to have an orgasmic response, it's, it's more than 25 minutes mm -hmm. of stimulation. If I have found a way to, to do that in five or 10 minutes by myself alone, when I'm not under, when I've relieved all pressures and I'm also, I have access to my toys and I'm then practicing a particular pattern, it might become frustrating to me when it takes longer. Oh. When I'm with a partner or if I switch up the routine. And the reason this matters to me is because I used to think of masturbation as something I did for myself, to myself, with myself, and, and completely solo. But when I added in the partnered piece, I thought, I thought I was doing it for myself, but it actually, it was years and years of uh, experience that I later realized, oh, I was actually performing mm -hmm. and my habituated routines were so drastically different from the performance I was putting on. So I have this routine that was about getting me off and then, and, th and that was faster. And then I'd have this performance style that I could do that wasn't mm. necessarily faster, but also didn't necessarily feel as juicy as mm. the stuff I was doing. But then there's another kind altogether, like a third whole realm of masturbation that was about exploring what my body wanted now, today, in this moment. Um, that, I mean, I've heard, oh goodness, I've, I've heard several people refer to it as mindful masturbation or, um, as a essential experience an exploration. Um, there are a lot of people who talk about this in a lot of different ways. Um, but I think that's the one, that's the kind of masturbation that I don't, I don't know how to tell somebody about it without saying, you got to try it to really understand mm -hmm. how different it would be because you're, it's about meeting your body where it is right now. And there is a, there's a level of self intimacy that can yeah. feel really exposing. Even if you're, even if you're alone, even when you've created a safe space for yourself to break the habit that you have, which there's nothing wrong with the habit, but to break the habit just for the exploration sake. Yeah. I, just for I, joy's sake. I have read some some things up in the lines of what you're talking about. It's like, okay, so as a uh, to you something you could add to your masturbation practice is just like running your hand over your neck and maybe down your chest. And I I read those things and say, well, that sounds nice and makes me actually more uncomfortable to think about than the more like explicit sexual masturbation activities. And it's because of the, the, the intimacy that it, that it feels like. Um, and that, that, that's just, that came up when, when you mentioned the self intimacy, it's like, Oh, okay. Apparently I have work to do to allow myself to be present with myself. Yeah. So I, and I think you and I have two different, um, we have two different histories with mm -hmm. masturbation. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't experience shame around touching myself when I was a child. That wasn't a shameful thing. Well, that, that was wasn't... part of how I defined masturbation. Does it feel shameful? It's probably masturbation. <laughs> right. So there's the thing. So shame was part of your erotic story and still right. is. Yeah. And so you, you play at the edges of shame. I, my edges are in some other places. Right. So, so it, my, my exploration tends to find shame. Your spots. fantasy, especially. Oh, yeah. Right. OK, so when we're talking about masturbation, the thing that I often don't hear talked about is what are you fantasizing about? Hmm. Because just touching your body and exploring your body and experiencing the, the sensations is important and valuable and luscious. And I mean. I'm a depth psychologist, so I care about this. What are you imagining? Right. What are you imagining? Because that to me is probably the most powerful act of imagination I have ever done. Active imagination is a Jungian term for engaging re thoroughly, really so like intentionally and consciously engaging your imagination 
in in a way that allows you to let your imaginal figures, the imaginal uh, like these 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 beings that you've imagined into being, like letting yourself interact with them. When we're in masturbatory fantasy and we're alone especially, there can be this this deep freedom to engage with these yes. these figures that have sprung to life out of our imagination. Sometimes we're watching pornography or we're, we're reading erotica and those figures are equally imaginal, but they also have this, there's an otherness to them. But when the figures are entirely created in your mind, there's something to me that, that that's magic. That's like a, that's a, that's a deep, that's a deep line into who are you yeah. as a person? What's going on for you? What do you, what do you long for? Who are you creating? And I think that that is just such a rich vein of knowing myself. So what do you do? How, how do you interact with those, those, those beings, those entities? Okay. So, <laughs> okay. The most personal thing I've ever talked about and that that's saying a lot, this is, I wrote a paper about this because I, it's one of the most important aspects of imaginal work to me. I learned to do dream work at school. Um, it, I learned to take these dream figures very seriously. Like they show up and they're very real. You've imagined your dreams, the animals and people and things in your dreams, you've imagined them into being. And so I learned to take them seriously and I don't mean seriously, like studiously, like seriously, like they exist. You have imagined them into yourself. And so when it comes to orgasmic fantasy and masturbatory fantasy, I take those equally seriously. The, the creatures and beings who I imagine in that moment, those to me, those are, those are representations of parts of me that I want to see um, archetypal figures, like really like <laughs> essential level figures that I want to have part of my life. So what I hear you saying is that you, you, you take these, these figures that you have imagined into being, and now you, um, you interact with them as real beings and have, and converse and yes. respond and you wait for their responses. Yes. That's, that's magic to me. I think that's amazing. I didn't know that that was particularly unusual and I don't even know whether it is. If, if people out there, if this is ringing any bells for you, I would love to hear from you. You can always email me Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I think that this particular way of interacting with my um, erotic fantasies has, it's, it's been pivotal for me to get to know myself better and to know um, uh, what I call, you know, capital S self, my, my larger than my ego self mm -hmm. because some of the figures that have come and interacted with me over the years that have entered my imaginal self are figures. Well, for there, there were years where I was interacting with a figure called Cassandra and it was clearly an archetypal mythological figure. I was wrestling day in and day out with the, with the reality of being disbelieved in my, in my life, in my waking life. And this figure would come and visit me in my dreams and in my fantasies. And she was with me for, yeah, about, about 10 years. And it was, it was an opportunity to feel seen. I, this is so, I, I'm certain that this is not what people were expecting from a talk about <laughs> masturbation. We can talk about slaves and vibrators so and all of that. Different but this is different. This is, um, fantasy in this way was the most healing thing I could do for myself. I was experiencing a day by day by day um, pushback from, from people in my life, people who I could not remove from my life, saying that my reality was not my reality. They were disbelieving my, my, my whole life. And it was incredibly painful. And I was related to some of these people. And it was really, really hard for me. And so I imagined this, this figure into being who, um, who knows what it is. So the, the mythological um, character of Cassandra is she refuses, she refuses a God 
Is it Apollo? I think so. Um, she refuses him sexual passageway. And he, so he offers her the gift of foresight. And then when she won't have sex with him, he, he spitefully says, and no one will ever believe you. So she can see the future and no one will believe her. And gods can be mean. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the whole thing, right? That's the whole jam. The, and for so me, you worked through. Ha, I was working through the day to day pain through the day -to -day of it. Pain of it using that and and the. Um, yeah. It was so, not a clear cut process, but it allowed me to to treat this pain that I was feeling in a way that brought me pleasure. I imagine oh. like I was I was experiencing pleasurable sensation, and I was experiencing being seen, which. In my book, being seen as being loved. I was experiencing being seen by something that was other than me, but was also completely created within in me and felt very safe. Hmm. So and, a very complicated version of, of self-love. Yeah. I, you know, where we, one of the first yeah. things we said about masturbation. Um, and, and. It was an act know, of kindness to myself. Yeah. Right. And I wasn't. I want to be clear. It wasn't that I consciously sat down and said, oh, I'm going to imagine this figure. I think that that would be fine and it would work. My intuition says that that would work. I could have I could have grabbed onto this figure of Cassandra and said, I'm going to meditate on that and use that figure to, to move forward. But at, in fact, she just appeared to me. Part of she it. spontaneously appeared in my imagination. Now, I happen to believe that that is for a reason that there's that there is a reason that I ascribed meaning to her mm -hmm. for a reason. And so she she took form for me. But I also got to choose what I did with that. So a thing that comes up with masturbatory fantasies in sessions with clients is some people really worry about the things that they masturbate about. Worry as in um, this might not be okay kind yeah, of worry. Oh, okay. yeah. And I think that you I have say, run oh, in, okay. Because I'm like, yeah, sure. I get that. You've run into that. Yep. So the way that I've just been talking about fantasy and masturbation, I think probably feels very like woo woo and, and, um, well, there's nothing terribly shameful feeling about it, but some of our masturbatory fantasies likely touch up against our sense of shame because there is a, there's yeah. a there's a close connection between shame and erotic sensation for a lot of us, yeah. right? They, they got all tangled. So for you, you were brought up in a household where shame and sex were one and the same. They were completely enmeshed. Yeah. And yeah. so to totally separate sex and shame has been a lifelong process. And at 54, you're not done with that. So they, there's an not. edge there and you can play with it. And so I... So the so masturbation as an act of self love and self discovery is the the perfect combination to apply to shame. So in a in a spot where I have felt shame, I um I feel love for myself in that spot, which That's helps it. offset the shame. And then moving a step beyond that into the self knowledge of what's going on for me where I can look at it for myself and decide how I feel about it instead of taking this shame that was laid on it unthinkingly. Okay. So, so it's a nice process. So yeah, so I, there are a few steps in here. Hmm. So one is figuring out what your body wants, what it enjoys. That's That's a whole exploration all on its own. Simply allowing yourself to feel pleasure and to explore what might feel pleasurable beyond like, whatever you figured out is quickest to get an orgasm. Mm -hmm. That is, I mean, we could, we could go on and on and on and talk about that. And maybe I'll talk to one of my favorite sex educators about that soon. Maybe well, we can have fun. her come on yeah. and speak about this because that is be wonderful great. and luscious. And there's another layer to this where you can, in doing that exploration, allow yourself to, to start to integrate some of what, has felt shameful to you by 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 giving yourself permission to enjoy yeah. your pleasure yep. by simply allowing yourself permission and i've had to 
strategically give myself permission to feel pleasure for things. And I don't feel shame closely tied to sex. So this comes up all the time. Permission is one of the very first steps almost all of my clients have always needed. Permission to experience pleasure and joy over almost anything. Pleasure and joy get easily consigned and um, and and assigned into a like, oh, I'm selfish or I'm. Yep, I admit yeah. the culture I grew up in, the family I grew up in, it was, it was like uh, it was related to the shame, but it was yeah, that's that's not where your attention should be. It's indulgent. It's indulgent. Yeah, there are other things that you should be doing. Okay, so step one, you can explore your body. Yeah. And explore variety around masturbation. I also recommend this to people who are experiencing any sort of um, orgasmic challenge that they're having, whether it's they feel like they're they're struggling to get an orgasm or they're struggling with orgasms that come too quick, um, or for them in their own sense of whether something's too quick. Play with your masturbation and, and change up what you're doing as a way to get to know your body in a variety of situations. You know, masturbate with a condom on, masturbate with um, a different set of toys, masturbate in a different position, masturbate in a different room, masturbate with um, another fantasy in your head, try out different pornography. There are so many things that we can play with. Yeah. And you can alter your own. Well, you will. You'll alter your own perceptions because you will learn what your body likes and you will learn some things that yeah, it's, it's so complicated. I'm having a trouble even just like simplifying it to talk. Well, I about. mean, people have written whole books about yeah. just this topic. Jack Warren's book, um, uh, The Erotic Mind, it talks about these core erotic patterns that we have. You know, you'll probably locate some of these core erotic stories. They just run through you. That's great. Like locating them and knowing it, them is part of knowing you. And it doesn't mean that those are the boundaries of you. There's always more to explore. So I would say the second layer for me is allowing myself to, to consciously fantasize about different things and not, and not stay stuck in like one particular story. And that means changing what I'm fantasizing about, what I'm imagining in my head, um, opening myself to other fantasies, changing what I'm watching um, yeah. in in pornography, changing what I'm reading, changing what I'm listening to if I'm using like Dipsy or any of those those tools, changing up the fantasy material can just be a, a way to explore. It doesn't mean that you have to change it forever either, but it can be a right. way to explore what you might find erotic. Um, because once we become habituated, it's yeah, we just have to shake things up. And then the third thing is introducing it to your your uh, your partnered sex life. Right. So masturbation yeah. as an act of self love and an act of, uh, of solo erotic energy, cool, and and it can influence and inform your your partnered sex life. I think some of the most bonding sexual experiences we have ever had were mutual masturbation or yeah. being present for each other's masturbation. Yep. I agree. Like by far. Yeah. So I, I, I can't, I don't think I could possibly do it justice to just say bridging that and allowing yourself to bring not performative masturbation, which happens all the time. And this is the, the type of touching yourself where you're, you're intentionally trying to turn someone on by doing something you believe that they will find erotic or something doing. that they're asking you to do. And that's, that may that's be just fine. Stuff. You yeah. may want to do that. And allowing yourself to sink into the depths of your erotic desire while being present and letting someone watch you. Yeah. Sharing being, your erotic landscape with other people. And that is what you said was your answer when we talked about what is sex? Oh, that's right. You said overlapping yep. erotic fantasy yeah. was sex for you. And so it doesn't come as a surprise to me that this would be where we'd wind up. Yeah. But I think that it's it's just a it's not a thing that we necessarily think about a lot. The opportunities that there are to be present for each other, to be present for each other's pleasure, um, and to do it from a place of real generosity. And so sometimes it's about focusing on one or the other of us 
and just yep. just the pleasure for one, even though it's a partnered experience. And that is one of the places where I've practiced compersion. So I can be not having an orgasm or not even, I might not even be in like an erotic mindset, yeah. but I might be in a very compersive mindset, yep. compersion being joy for your partner's joy. When I'm in that space and masturbation is happening and that is part of it, that, that feels like a real rewiring of what yes, I find I erotic and where I get pleasure. And that to me seems like a miracle. It is a miracle. It's, it's one of the, it's one of the really major miracles of relating. I, I feel, um, so there are all kinds of aspects of life where you're, you're, you're with, um, somebody that means a lot to you and you have a shared experience and it just, it like, it colors your relationship for forever. Like you, you've, you've shared this amazing experience and, and things change, you know, Oh, some... it's exactly how our relationship started. Our, yes, this part right. of our relationship mm -hmm. started because we had a numinous experience. Right. We had a, on a very, very nasty, sticky dance it was, floor. It was very, very we sticky. We experienced a, a, a lightning bolt I, yeah. um, of yeah. essentially sacred energy. It was a miracle. It and changed it was shocking. everything. And it didn't have to wind up here. But no, we didn't. no matter where it went, it happened. It was it was it yeah. was lightning bolts. It was the whole catastrophe. And no matter where we went from there, it was never not going to have happened. That's right. Because we'd known each other our whole lives. And all of a sudden, oh, my God. Right. What? Huh? You exist. It was like seeing through your skin into your actual soul. Yes, exactly. And I could never not know that you existed. And that was a thing that I we couldn't have planned. You know, that, that wasn't, it was a miracle. I don't out think of you nowhere. can manufacture that. But in a but relationship, but you can facilitate it. Yes. You can open up and make available the possibility for these kinds of miracles by, by exploring yourself. Um, and if your partner is exploring themselves also, and then you come together with that new perspective, that new information, and then you combine those things, it's a, a, a much higher probability that these kinds of miracles will happen. Syzygy. Syzygy. I love, I love that, that word. word. <laughs> it's a day for Jungian words. Um, so syzygy, the, um, the, the moment when the, the celestial body is all up. aligned, yep. right? You can create the opportunity for the miraculous yep. by simply allowing space and allowing yourself to explore yeah. your the edges. And in my experience, the more open I have been to myself, the more um, I've let my own private intimate self be come out and be available, the oh, yeah. more likely this is going to happen. This is the it has been so much easier for me to simply be present and open and available for whatever you've got. Bring it all out. Go ahead. I'm I'm here. I'm here for your for your weakness and your mm -hmm. shame and your sadness and your anger so much more challenging to say, okay, I'm going to be present for those things in myself. Oh yeah. And, right. then, and then be present and allow you to see them. The times that I have been most scared about letting something out have 100% of the time resulted in some elevated level of connection with you. Some, and like positive. I want to be clear. Yeah. It's a, I'm, I'm scared. I'm worried that this thing is going to wreck everything and I bring it out and, and together it turns into something amazing. Well, and there's the thing. Sometimes it does quote unquote ah, wreck something. Right. We had a time something. not that long ago where you showed me some erotic material that you enjoyed and it was a little edgy for me. It was not, it, it wasn't even, it wasn't problematic, but it woke something up in me and I was like, Ooh, it shocked, yep. it shocked a part of me. Yeah. Now I had seen this stuff before, but in that moment, it, that it context, just, that moment, yeah, it got me, it hit you a particular and way. So we dealt with the ramifications of that. I had feelings yeah. and in the dealing with those feelings and making space for the fact that, that we were, ex we weren't on the same page. Yeah. There was, there was a whole new thing to unpack in our relationship. 
And then there was a way for us to actually overlap our erotic stories again yeah. later when yeah. that material became interesting and erotic to me. And I couldn't have gotten there without that blip, without that time where you offered yourself up. And in fact, it wasn't a beautiful, wonderful moment. It in was fact, not. it was, ah, but ah, it, and I shut down some yeah. and all sorts of stuff happened. But the, but the, the longer term outcome, the 12 hour incredibly, outcome, yeah, the 36 what, hour and then yeah, the, positive. and then the two year <laughs> outcome. Yep. Yeah. Those yeah. were all growth opportunities that we couldn't have predicted and we had to be willing to tolerate the discomfort right. of yeah of the, of the initial blip because you never know exactly how it's going to go no. exploration isn't always going to feel super super safe it's exploration it's exploration you don't know what's going to come up but i'm so proud of everybody out there yeah. who's exploring exploring with yourself exploring with your partner partners being present that makes me so happy. And I'm feeling all kinds of, of excited and compersive for you right in this moment, just thinking about, wow, you were really, you were really present for my pain in that, in that little blip that we yep. had. And that makes me want to return the feeling. I'm like, oh, now I'm looking for your joy. I, I'm sort of, I feel myself sort of initiating compersive engines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like so, so these, to... these hiccups, these disturbances that can happen when you, when you bring something out, the, the fruit that comes out of that, you, you don't know, it can come up in all different kinds of ways. Yeah. Um, okay. So we could go on for half an we hour, could. another half hour, uh, go forth a... and masturbate everyone. Enjoy, Explore, <laughs> enjoy sex enjoy, with yourself. Learn, enjoy touching your body. Enjoy bringing these things out experiment and if you have questions along these lines please do email either yeah, and of us I, ken at joliehamilton.com uh please i am open to all the questions yeah because Love them. the questions let us build episodes that will really um serve what what you're looking for and that's we want to we want. facilitate conversations and new ideas so yeah bring it on yeah have fun everybody have fun Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love, is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.